So you'd think in 2018 that psilocybin magic mushrooms would be legal, but that's not the case. For the most part, most psychedelics are illegal. And if you really think about it, it's kind of fucked up that literally majority of psychedelics, besides maybe, let's say, ayahuasca or iboga due to religious reasons or under the religious act, thank God, are illegal substances. And yet, what's more striking is if you look at the scientific evidence, specifically for psilocybin, which has been studied quite frequently and uh, quite extensively, the benefits are amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. Personally, for me, my own personal experimentation, I can say that magic mushrooms is probably one of the best tools in the tool set that I have, especially when it comes to microdosing with shrooms, maybe every like third, fourth day as, as MAP says. By the way, if you guys aren't aware of MAPS, which is Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Research, which is founded by Rick Dublin, I highly recommend you check them out. I will leave a link below this video for this. Anyways, I want to talk about this study. It's not too recent. Well, actually, it's pretty recent, October 2017, talking about magic mushrooms rebooting the brain in depressed people. But this isn't just any depressed people. They were talking about people with depression who also were undergoing cancer or had cancer. And they tried every treatment. They tried, let's say, antidepressants. They tried certain different modalities, but everything failed. But yet, when it came to... Uh, doing magic mushrooms and psilocybin, the results, well, the results speak for themselves. And what's really more fascinating is one dose, so one dose of psilocybin was enough to help them out six months later. So once they took the one dose, the, the beneficial effects of that one dose from psilocybin lasted six months afterwards. What's pretty cool, though, is let me pull this up over here. Where is it? Here it is. The imaging, so they did a fMRI, a magnetic scan of the brain when it came to uh, psilocybin. So on the left, you're looking at communication between brain networks and people given psilocybin, which is psilocybin is on the right, and non-psilocybin, which is on the left. Let me move my mouse over here. Look at the brain activity of people on psilocybin. And what's really cool about this, um, I haven't pulled up the study over here, but they have another study talking about psilocybin with the potentiality of regrowing back glial cells. So it has, the po it has the potentiality and the properties of neurogenesis, of regrowing back your brain cells, which is amazing. Like That's amazing for people who have epilepsy. That's amazing for people who have depression. That's amazing for people who have Parkinson's. That's amazing for people who have uh, brain cancer, etc. Anything to do with neurological issues, that's amazing. Neurogenesis. Jesus Christ. And this is an easily but measurable quick, metric from a, from a psilocybin experience. While he is fully on the experience, he said he did not really use his hearing aid for three or four days. Now, I've mentioned this. Why to didn't he just do mushrooms again and keep the hearing aid on? Well, that's basically he ran out of cubensis. And oh, so he had to put his hearing aid on. And he was asking me for cubensis. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't provide it to wow. you. So I've mentioned this now to several of the clinical researchers who have DEA license who are doing clinical research. This is an easily measurable metric. You can, you know, as people are fully, you know, in these sessions, they could be giving them auditory stimulation to see if the auditory nerve is undergoing uh, uh, neurogenesis. They're, they're like nodes of crossing, and, and there's an interconnectedness that occurs. And there's a great graphic, um, which I didn't send you in, in advance, um, showing this is your brain uh, without psilocybin, this is your brain with, with psilocybin. And there's a massive amount of neural connections that are occurring. So I think, um, you know, uh, the, just like water chooses the path of least resistance, I think that neurologically, if, if there is a neurological pathway that can help you as a species, as an individual survive, should there be a saber-toothed tiger on the horizon, then I think that the economy of energy in nature would reward the neurological pathways that are most likely to lead to your survival. And so here we are, 2018 where you have study after study showing the beneficial effects of psilocybin. And yet, it's illegal. And it's actually nefarious when you th think about what the pharmaceutical companies are doing. See, it's interesting because they want you to be... Uh, they, don't, they don't want you to be dead because that's bad for business. 
They don't want you to be smart because that's also bad for business, but they want you to be sick enough so you can keep on rebuying their scripts and, subs and their subscriptions. Because if you look at, for example, psilocybin or plants, you can't really patent them. And for the fact that if you need to only use them a couple of times and, and it alleviates you of your issues, you're not a repeat customer. Hence, the pharmaceutical business model collapses. And so I really hope that more and more people start investigating this. There's organizations, like I mentioned, MAPS are really on the frontier pushing this. But psilocybin has to be one of the greatest substances on the planet. Now, obviously, you want to consult your physician before this. And probably your physician will tell you, wow, that's really dangerous. But, you know, everyone is a little bit different. But that being said, guys, I really think it's time for laws to change. I think time for regula regulators to take their heads out of their asses and realize that this is a medicine. Psilocybin and plant medicine is a medicine. I think all plant medicine should be legal and everybody should have the right to consume whatever they want to consume. Uh, the government should not be telling you what you can and cannot eat or what you can and cannot c consume for medicine. And so I'll leave you at that. Hopefully, you know, in the next couple of years, more and more people will wake up and more and more people realize that there are a lot of beneficial properties when it comes to plant medicines. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.